everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be reviewing three of the top most popular free programs um, that you can download to draw with uh, to try to find out which one is the best. Um, obviously, this is going to be just based on my opinion and my experiences with the programs, so take them with a grain of salt, and I'll try to explain um, the pros and cons of all the programs. So let's start off with GIMP. GIMP is one that was really popular when I was first getting into drawing, and I remember trying it out before I had Photoshop. Uh, right off the bat, I like this color picker with the triangle, though I don't understand why the triangle flips around like that. Um, it's actually really inconvenient, even though it's kind of cool looking. Um, and uh, right away, one of the major cons um, are, is actually something I remember from downloading GIMP way back when uh, that they've still kept, which is that every panel in the program is actually a separate window um, that you see you will have to uh, click to select if you want to interact with it, which basically means um, every time you want to go get a tool, you have to click on that little window that is the toolbox um, and then click your tool. And then same thing with going back to the uh, drawing that you're trying to do. I'm not really sure why they decided to split all these things apart, but it's one of my major pet peeves about this design. Um, other than that, there's also some, I was having some trouble with getting the pen pressure to work. Obviously, I've never, um, I haven't used GIMP in years and years, um, and this was just a fresh download uh, with default settings. Um, but I did a bit of internet research trying to find out how you were supposed to get the pen pressure to work, um, and overall I never really got it working. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do it. There's a lot of fake pen pressure settings on GIMP as well, which is kind of interesting, where they will do an artificial taper as if you flicked the pen, um, and I don't really like that. I do like controlling my own pressure sensitivity. Um, so yeah, out of the box GIMP um, is not exactly what I really liked that much, um, though there's probably a lot of ways you can fix some of these things. Uh, I'm just sort of judging it based on how you get it when you first download it. Um, but some good things to say about GIMP though are that it has a lot of the functionality of Photoshop, which of course is a very expensive program, um, whereas GIMP is for free. I like that it's available on both Mac and Windows, which is great because uh, I've been a Mac user for a long time, but I also have Windows machines and it's just good to have, um, have the option to use both. Um, of course it has the same layer system that Photoshop and many other drawing programs do, and it has a built-in smoothing tool which is interesting and good um, when you are learning how to use a tablet or even just to smooth out your lines in general. Um, it also has a navigator which I was able to open up, and uh, it is very nice. The one really convenient thing about every thing being its own little window is that you can really customize um, your like drawing space and workspaces as much as you'd like. Um, I gotta say some of the default brushes are really weird um, and uh, I only really used the default round ones so far. Um, another thing that I had a lot of trouble with was the fill bucket tool. Um, it didn't really work and it leaves these heinous uh, white lines around them which I never quite figured out how to circumvent. Um, there's a way to do it in Photoshop and there's a way to do it in a lot of other programs but in GIMP uh, it seemed really hard to get around this uh, really jarring white um, like sort of jitter effect on the outside of everything that you paint bucket which is kind of unfortunate. Overall, my biggest problem with GIMP is actually the performance. Um, it has jagged lines if you don't turn on smoothing because it's not keeping up with your mouse and when you undo, it undoes in sort of a shutter effect um, that is slow and annoying. But there's the finished piece. Um, it doesn't look too horrible, honestly, as long as you're pretty zoomed out so you can't see the little white lines. Next up, I'm trying Fire Alpaca, and the first con is right up front, um, is that there are ads at the start. Though, I gotta say, it's not a very intrusive ad, um, and it's nothing weird, um, so it's not too big of a deal. But it is interesting, because I almost never see ads inside of programs like this. The first thing I noticed about Fire Alpaca that I really liked was that it already has a navigator up in the corner where I like it. Um, and actually it's almost as if Fire Alpaca was sort of built the exact way that I have my um, Photoshop put together, which is not default for Photoshop, mind you, so I was really pleasantly surprised that it just happened to perfectly suit what I um, tend to like to draw with. Um, I picked up a pencil tool and it worked right away and it was significantly smoother to draw with than GIMP. Um, 
I don't know if Fire Alpaca is just better at dealing with new computers because it's a newer program or what, but um, based on that alone, Fire Alpaca already uh, was better than GIMP to me. Um, it also was, um, it detected when I flipped my pen around. Some tablets have an eraser on the other side, and while GIMP did not detect that I had an eraser on the other side of my tablet pen, uh, Fire Alpaca instantly knew uh, that to switch to an eraser when I flip my pen around, so that was also really convenient. And the pen pressure worked immediately without me having to do any research whatsoever. Um, this one also has a smoothing tool built right in, it's called Correction. Um, I turned mine up to 20 just to get a real feel of how that smoothing works, and it is quite pleasant, I would say. Um, I, the, the inking line is a little bit less responsive than, say, my uh, inking thick and thin pen with that I usually use with Photoshop, but overall I was really impressed with these default um, brushes, and I thought that they were quite good. I also think that the design of this one, while it's super minimalist, is also very nice. Um, if you look at the toolbar, you'll see that the icons are super small and super simple, but um, it's not too hard to tell what they're supposed to be, like your pen and your eraser. There's also not way too many tools, which is something that bothers me about Photoshop, is that there's just way too many tools on your toolbar at all times, especially if you're just using it for illustration, which I am. Um, so the only real con I experienced with Fire Alpaca was, um, of course, the ad at the front, which again is not a super big deal, um, but also that the brush, uh, the brush and eraser icon that you use when you're actually drawing with them is a little bit weird. You don't actually get to see the size of what you're going to be drawing with, at least with the eraser. It just kind of has a little picture of the eraser instead of, like, say, a um, round circle to show you how much you're about to erase, which is a bit of a problem problem. Um, but uh, again, it's not too too big of an issue. Uh, the other thing that this one has over GIMP is that it saves your size preference between your eraser and your pencil. Whereas in GIMP, it seemed like if you change the size of your eraser, it also changed the size of your pen um, or brush or pencil or whatever you're using, which is kind of inconvenient because usually I like to have my eraser at least twice as big as m the, the brush I'm drawing with. Now there's something extremely cool about this program that I wish that Photoshop had, and that's up in the upper toolbar here, and this is really relevant when you're coloring. Um, it shows up when you're selected the uh, paint bucket tool, and it says basically expand, uh, expand pixel or something like that, uh, I'll zoom in on it right here. And um, if you set that, you can set it to one, two, or three, and it will expand your selection um, by one, two, or three pixels all around, which basically means that you don't have to worry about those white edges that you get when you're filling in with the paint bucket tool. I think that's a super elegant uh, solution to this paint bucket problem. It saves a lot of time if you find yourself going back um, and having to draw over white spots over and over again. You won't really have to do that anymore, and all you really have to worry about when you're coloring in with the paint bucket is making sure that your lines are closed. And that's the finished Fire Alpaca illustration. Um, it doesn't mean too much, but it should also be noted that it took me 15 minutes less to draw that one than it took to draw Planchette in GIMP. And now for the last program, I'm going to be reviewing Krita. And um, I was really excited about this one because this one is one that you guys are constantly confusing for Photoshop. Um, a lot of people say that I'm using Krita or ask me if I'm using Krita and I've never used it before. But um, unfortunately, Krita does not work on my computer at all. Um, I tried really hard to figure out what the problem was. Basically what was happening is that the brush would drag around the screen. It wouldn't, um, it basically could barely move. It was always following after my cursor very, very slowly, almost as if I had some kind of smoothing on like a hundred million percent or something. Um, but uh, there was no such setting and I looked it up and apparently this is a relatively common problem with Krita, um, and I really tried to to draw something in it for you guys, but um, it was just, it was like painful to try to work with, um, which is a shame because already right away, right when I opened it, I had a lot of pros for this program. Um, for example, I love the color wheel. It has that triangle shaped color picker without it spinning around like crazy, like it does in GIMP. Um, and uh, I really like the design. It has that nice dark interface that I've gotten really 
fond of, um, but it is unfortunately, as of now, completely unusable. I drew this little sloppy planchette in Krita um, just to try and get something made for you guys, but um, as of now, I can't review Krita until I figure out what's wrong with it. Um, so in shorts, uh, with, with my relatively limited review process of all these programs, I would say that Fire Alpaca is the total winner. Um, all of these are available on PC and Mac though, and they are available for free. So if you can, um, or if you'd like to, you can of course try them all out for yourself. Um, let me know if you have any favorites among these three programs, if you know what's wrong with Krita on my computer, or if you just have any insights about these programs, because uh, as I said at the start of the video, this is a fresh review of each one. These I haven't used really any of these in their modern format. So um, yeah, I hope this was helpful to you guys, and I hope you know that you don't need expensive programs to make really good art. Um, so just, yeah, try out one of these, um, really try out Fire Alpaca, I was so impressed with it. Um, it's, it's really comparable with Photoshop, uh, and for, for literally zero, zero dollars whatsoever. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you again very soon. Thank you to my patrons, including Blep, Code, Ellie Quiznack, Miss Misu, Christy Stewart, Payne Amel, Elizabeth Albin, Kalpampon, Sergeant Pendulum, Lovely, Lachlan MD, Mystic, Vilka, Enzo Jobert, Yaboy ST, Adrian Delport, JJ, Laura Buter, Riley James, Superpixel, An Angela Taylor, Hallman Kearney, Le Bleh Bleh Bleh, Addy Visual, and At Live Likes to Draw. If you would like to become a patron, there's a link on the end card. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I'll see you next week.